Sheridan getting a few starts as a freshman, coming into this sophomore campaign. He's really raised the level of his game, and DU has found their goalie. On the other side of the field, junior Will Vuitton, and he's fantastic as well in goal. And Pioneer fans probably remember him well here at 19 saves in the last regular season matchup, which was here at Peter Barton Lacrosse Stadium. Two lefty goalies that sometimes you don't see much can give some shooters just a little bit of a different look when you're going to wind up and shoot. Can throw you out. drop coming off a hat trick last week. Three goals on three shots. It's about as efficient as you can get. Pass in front, it's Simmons. That went off the pipe. Oh, a crease violation here. They didn't reset the shot clock. Villanova has it. And they're shooting from way down deep and they score. First goal of the game from all the way at the other end, Stevie Jones. And that's one of the drawbacks of the 10-man ride. To beat a 10-man ride, that's what you've got to sometimes got to take the opportunity to do. Take that long shot. If you don't make it, you're going to send your attackman to get that back up. And this is one of those situations with a 10-man ride is if this happens once, maybe one more time, Coach T's going to be very, very quick to pull that plug on that 10-man ride. So far, this villain of a defense is slowing this DU offense down by really extending out and playing these guys further back and really slowing down the pace that DU likes to play at. I would love to see this ball start moving a little bit faster for this DU offense. Like right now, you're watching, there's one guy dodging, and it's an incredible individual effort by Teddy Sullivan as I'm saying it. But a normal Matt Brown offense that we are used to is seeing ball movement and people movement. So everyone on the field is moving at the same time as the ball's moving, but right there, Teddy Sullivan just does a great job putting his foot into the ground, getting top side like you're told to do as a midfielder, and just sticks it to that off stick side lie on Vuitton. This is one of those situations that it's nice being a lefty as Teddy Sullivan is, shooting a touch with that ball on their stick, get comfortable, then let's start moving. The more movement and the quicker you can move that ball, the more that defense is gonna have to rotate and you're gonna start seeing some more holes but I feel like this DU offense right now is just moving at a little bit slower pace than what Coach Brown would like to see. And a wraparound goal, here's Zach Hutchko scoring. A grad student from Charlotte, North Carolina, working from behind the goal, coming around and sticking that one, his second goal of the season. Watching this replay, watch how quick this first step is. He makes it look like he's going to the other side and just puts his foot in the ground. Quick move, gets his hands free and sticks it to that low right corner. The two goals that have gone in so far, Brad, have been both off stick and low. That would lead. It's always a big cliche that it's tough to beat a team three times. Hannah lost it, it's got knocked away. And the Wildcats have it, going in the opposite direction. They scored the first goal, then Denver poured in two, and here's another. The first from the offense. Patrick Daly, the junior, firing that one and tying things up. Comes off a turnover on the other end by Jack Hanna. And Villainous comes down and uses this early offense as things are getting still set, as it's unsettled, as everyone's kind of coming back on. You're, you're subbing your defensive middies off getting your omenies on, and Patrick Daly just goes right at his defenseman. Good things happen when you're driving hard. A creates an excellent shot opportunity for himself, and B draws a penalty. Man up situation here for the Pioneers. And there it is. 3-2, the advantage for the Pioneers. And they didn't waste much time on that man up opportunity. They found an opening and Silstrop puts it in. Yeah, just 15 seconds into that man up. Riley Curtis, this low attack. Wildcats gonna run this one down. Nine and a half to play here. 
before halftime. Man up advantage for the Pioneers is over. Daly put the last one in for the Wildcats. He's going to take another shot and scores again. The bouncer just snuck in on the inside the near post. Second of the day for Daly. Patrick Daly, 6'2", 190 pounds, and he uses all of his size just to go right at Jack Benedetto. Pretty good defense by Jack Benedetto. That rising shot goes wide. Hannah firing from the far side. Nine a, seconds left on the shot clock. That was an excellent setup by Alex Simmons there. He realized that he had the short stick, liked his matchup, got top side, drew the second one, got that over to Hannah. Hannah just misses that ball wide, but that's a great looking play. And Hannah scoring here with the shot clock, running down, firing from the outside and buries it. Hannah makes up for that missed opportunity and catches this ball. What's so impressive about this goal right here is watch how quick Hannah gets this ball into his stick and gets it out. He catches it loaded, and it's a bit of a screenshot that he uses that Villanova defense. Calmly standing behind the cage as the traffic keeps moving in front. Feeds it up top. A shot from the outside, and we're tied again. Villanova striking back. Matt Campbell this time. A name, Brad, that I'm surprised that we haven't said more already. Matt Campbell, a high powering midfielder for Villanova. Just does a great job at just putting himself in a spot to catch and release this ball. You see him back out. He presents his stick well and is able to catch this ball from over. The that is an excellent save by Jack Thompson. Keeping this DU team in it. Got just enough of it. Any means necessary, able to keep it out of the goal. Doesn't matter how you save it, Brad. Yeah, and thankfully it was right there. And now the bounce shot. Jack Hanna, second of the game, giving the Pioneers the lead back. And this is what makes Jack Hanna so good. And this is what makes him a mid-season All-American selection, is how good he is at dodging in these unsettled situations. And you can get to your right every single time, just like Jack Hanna can. Stathic is able to win that one. Plays it back to Thompson. Jack Hanna, senior, six foot one, 205 pounds, Milford, Ohio. Coming out to the Mile High City. And having a huge career for the Pioneers. He's got it again here. Looking to get inside, takes another shot, scores again. A hat trick for Hanna. This is an awesome momentum goal. You get a huge save by Jack Thompson on the defensive end. He lays on the ball to keep it going from the back of the net. Jack Tom, or Jack Hanna, excuse me, comes down, gets a bit of an unsettled goal, and then right this next time, feed the hot hand. He's coming out of the box. He's getting a steam roll, a head full of steam, straight down the field. Back to action here right before halftime. 6-4 the advantage for the home team. The Wildcats. Do have possession. If you're Villanova, you want to probably run this one down as much as you can. If you can get another shot clock, you can run it down all the way. Campbell going to fire the shot, and a big goal there. Scoring his second of the day and trimming this lead to one. Matt Campbell just puts his shoulder down. Takes his ball, is driving hard top side on Malik Sparrow and just catches Malik off guard just a little bit. As you see, as Malik was trying to throw that check, he kind of got caught up with his, his footwork just a little bit here. As he goes to make contact, just slips off a little bit. 
but that's going to force those other guys to beat him. And don't let the likes of a, an Alex Simmons or a Jackson Morrill be the one that's beating you. And let's not forget, Ethan Walker not out there. The first game he's ever missed in his Pioneer career as the Pioneers score there. Teddy Sullivan able to sneak that one in, his second of the game. Teddy Sullivan loves playing against the Villanova Wildcats. In his career debut when he was a freshman in 2018, he had his first four goals of his career against Villanova. And now he's coming out and he starts the... Pioneers with a chance to build some momentum here with the stop, now looking to score again. Ellis Geis, 18 out there, along with Zach Hutchko and Sam Dwinell, second midfield group. Feet in front, Simmons to Morrill, a beauty of a goal. This is beautiful offense, Brad. If you watch this whole possession when it first started, D, you started with two men on the crease. So anytime that's happening, you know one of them's gonna pop off a roll off. And this time it was Alex Simmons who actually pops off to the left-hand side. As soon as he pops off to that left-hand side, he's able to get that matchup he likes with number 57 check going to 67 games now. Unbelievable. Highest active, longest active streak in the country. 67 games with a point for Jackson Morrill. Most of those coming at Yale. And his total career games played is 70. So it's it was just his third game of his freshman year against Bryant, which was a loss for the Bulldogs as the Villanova Wildcats able to sneak that one in. It's Daly again. Tough angle, but able to put it in. Got it past Thompson. And that's a big goal for the Wildcats where the Pioneers started to build some momentum. Said it once already with Teddy Sullivan, but good things happen when you go to the goal hard. Daly, a natural left-hander, catches Benedetto, cheating to that off side. Daly actually keeps it in his left hand. Has had an excellent day so far today, not only covering the ball, but he's had three or four big time IQ plays of either slowing down a fast break. We saw it on the possession before, the great slide. And that's what you ask for out of your grad senior who started since a freshman. He's the leader of the team. Morrill again, sticking that one home off a terrific pass. Morrill second of the game, second in a row. And the Pioneers are talking about halftime adjustments. They got something going here, feeding it inside. Two guys that share a lot of chemistry, both playing at Yale before, now to do you. And that is, not only is that a great look by Lucas Cotler, but it's actually with an off-handed feed into the inside. But this handle by Jackson be called every time. Stathakis with that slash against Gavin Burke. And just like that, the Wildcats take advantage. Trim it to 7-6. It's Daly again, his fourth of the game. 9-7 the Pioneers in front, but Daly pouring it on here in the second half. That's just too easy of a goal. That's too easy of a man down goal to give up. And we haven't seen that from the Pioneers all season. No, and it looks like Adam Hanglin presents himself. Gets an easy goal. Alex Stathicus making up for that penalty. Wins the faceoff and pours it in. 10-7. This is a huge play by Alex Daffikas. Just like you said, he realizes he made a mistake on the one before. Not only did he not win the faceoff, but he took a penalty and they get an easy goal. And that was a great job too. He actually doesn't win the, the clamp initially on that one, but he does a great job of exiting that ball out. Just so strong. So strong and so big that he gets it out. And it actually almost looks like, look, Half this penalty gone. Pioneers work it around. Hannah's going to fire. Save made. Vatan able to come up with it, although it's loose. Villanova had a chance to pick it up. Hannah scooping up that ground ball. Morrill 
as the penalty expires. But right in front, what a shot. Silstrop buries it. It's gonna go down even strength, but that, they were still at the advantage right there. And Silstrop wide open in front. This play made, and this whole play was made possible by Jack Hanna riding that ball back. But Ton makes a great save on the one. He rides it hard. I think that that's pretty darn good defense. Results in a 30-second penalty, a man up opportunity for the Wildcats. As they're trailing by four. We're getting to get the offense going again. Plenty of time, still five minutes to go here in the third quarter. And there's a goal. With seven to go on the penalty, Villanova able to put it in. Eric Overbay this time. Seventh of the season. Keegan Kahn's able to draw Kyle Smith down low. AJ McCreary was just a little late on that slide, getting out to Overbay's hand. Hannah back on. Villanova in front right now, 11-10 on faceoffs. Justin Coppola has been taking them all, and what a job he's done. Just a sophomore, 5'5", 160 pounds from Garden City, New York, and he's out playing two of the best right now. As the Pioneer score again, Jackson Morrill, the hat trick. All coming here in the second half. What an absolute snipe by Jackson Morrill. There was some anger behind this shot right here, Brad. He just reaches back, steps in. Oh my goodness. Look at that placement. Absolutely paints that top right corner. You really can't shoot the ball better than this. Overhand, fundamental. It's D7. Game point streak. Stathicus able to win it. Smith's going to fire and he scores. Back to back weeks with goals for Kyle Smith. Here come the Pioneers. The big tuna, a highly recruited offensive midfielder out of high school in Connecticut. He is not afraid to let this ball fly. And I love the way on this fast break, the way that you just moved the ball. No one had the ball on their stick for longer than two seconds. It gets going hot from Stathicus over to Denver's going to take their time on this possession. They play it behind. Simmons. And another goal. Kotler this time. Firing from the top side and scoring. When this offense gets moving, and you see how quickly guys are moving the ball and moving their feet, it is dangerous. Jack Hanna already has three goals in this game, so you know he's gonna draw a lot of attention. Gets to the middle field, gets to his left hand, pulls back, and... They've won the last couple, and it's resulted in points on the scoreboard. Hanna looking for a call there, didn't get it, Simmons. Falling down, able to score, unbelievable. Are you kidding me? Alex Simmons, first of the day, 22nd of the season. And we do have a new goalie in, in there, Brendan Haggerty. Alex Simmons just goes hard to the net, gets tripped. As he's falling down, gets that ball off. And you can see that emotion that this team has now. Simmons celebrating, getting the team. Pioneers on a 4-0 run right here. It was 11-8. And then Denver has taken over four straight face-off wins, four straight goals. Just like that, they've started to blow this one out. Kotler again, feeding the ball in front to these Pioneers, cutting through the middle. It has really worked out well here in the second half. The gates are starting to open up for this Pioneer offense. 
as they're now starting to make that extra pass, give the one more, and get it to that best look. Kotler keeps his feet going upfield. Could easily take in that shot and fade it away, but he does a great job. A lot has to be going in your favor to be able to have just an absolute explosion on offense like the Pioneers have had. And you talked about in the first half about how we were making such a big deal of this face-off unit for the Pioneers, and it hadn't shown up. In fact, Coppola had single-handedly outplayed the unit for the Pioneers, and then all of a sudden the switch comes on and the Pioneers take over on the face-offs, and the result on the scoreboard has, has equaled the same as in the face-offs. As Kotler now with a hat trick, and they continue to pour it on. Third of the game, all coming here in the second half. Kotler, another one of these guys that just, for some reason, loves playing against Villanova. He had a career high of five points against Villanova in the 2020 season. Now he's got three on the day. Well, it's Keeps interesting. Them. Man up advantage here for Villanova. We've got one minute on this one. They're going to have to start rolling offensively to get back in this one. It was 11-8. Daly scored to make it 11-8, and now he's in front. And we've got another goal here. Villanova tightening it up, finally ending this run. Corey McManus, the senior from Summit, New Jersey, able to put that one in. Six straight goals for Denver before McManus stops the run and scores on this man up advantage. He came in with pretty gaudy numbers already as Blair able to escape the pressure there. Pass going wide there. It's going to go across midfield. Over and back going to be called there. Thompson, when you look at it, safe percentage at 55, almost 56. And as I talk about it, he gives one up. Gavin Burke firing and scoring. Sophomore from Wayne, Pennsylvania. It's going to be his first goal of the season. Villanova does a good job of catching that ball as the ball goes over and back, knowing that as soon as they pick up that ball on the offensive end, it's going to get blown in from the from the officials. Any shots in the rest of that third quarter because of how well that DU offense was doing, just moving the ball, keeping it hot, and just got that little bit of momentum and then kept the foot on the gas was the other part I loved about it. Sometimes you go on those runs and it's easy to let up just a little bit. Once you're kind of feeling the momentum, you kind of take a deep breath and you're like, whew, all right, we got ourselves a lead a little bit, but they just kept on the gas, and that's what I love to see about this DU team. There's the final horn. The Pioneers win it 17 to 10.